Welcome everyone, another video from Limitless Potential Technologies. If you're new here, the purpose of this channel is to release new clean energy technology to the people, free of fear and greed, open sourcing it, working together, showing every step of the process. If you're interested in that, stay tuned because we're coming at you from my garage. I'm showing you the build of their current project, the release of this technology, all the steps, everything in fulfilling my lifelong passion of bringing free energy to the people. I've spent the last 15 years or so of my life researching suppressed technologies, patents, getting an electrical engineering degree, and I've come to the conclusion that the easiest way and most scalable technology is these types of high voltage motors that produce a spinning wheel, a rotor. They do this by taking a run battery, putting a voltage into a coil, a pulse, it creates a magnetic field, and that magnetic field repels or attracts magnets, causing rotation in this rotor. This rotor has magnets taped on the outside. The rotor is a bicycle wheel and this particular build is called a Bendini motor. So after we take our pulse and we cause a magnetic field to cause the rotation of this rotor, <clears throat> we shut it off and there's a collapse of that magnetic field. Now we put in 12 volts from this run battery, but because of the amplification effect of these coils of wire, what comes out is much higher voltage. Lower amperage, but higher voltage. So you think of it, it's got higher pressure and lower flow. That high pressure spike of electrons from the collapse of the magnetic field is then fed into this charge battery. So we're recycling the energy from this machine. Now that high voltage spike of energy, when it goes into the battery, it's made of electrons. Inside the battery there's ions, lead ions. So these ions are much heavier than the electrons and this fast moving spike of electrons blows by the lead ions and it causes a dipole, so a negative and a positive charge within the battery kind of instantaneously. But from my understanding that's where the magic happens is that dipole within the lead acid battery allows energy from the ether, vacuum energy, zero point energy from the environment to flow into the system. So this whole piece, this whole system here, the coil, the high voltage impulse, the collecting the back, recycling of that energy is a system that allows for excess energy to be harvested from the environment, zero point energy, vacuum energy, no breaking of thermodynamic laws, we're just simply harvesting excess energy from the environment, it's an open system depending on where your box is. There's always a bigger box and an open system. Now, I've been <coughs> upgrading this. Our current project is an upgrade of this technology. There's been many different types of spinning rotors. There was an inventor in the 50s, 60s, Ed Gray. He built on that, basically put massive discharges of capacitors into coils and caused a rotor to move. He had copious amounts of energy. There's been other guys like Bendini, Bill Mueller. He's actually lived near me. He's gone, but he had a motor down in Penticton, British Columbia, and I'm in Kelowna, British Columbia. So there's literally Huge amounts of inventors who have already implemented this tech, proven it, displayed it for others, but they got scared off. Those guys have all passed. Anyways, building on the backs of those inventors, we're gonna take this technology and implement it. We're not inventing anything, we're just simply building together in an open sourced way to fix the world and the current energy production problems that we have in this planet. We've got to control top-down method of energy distribution and a lot of the ways we produce energy are detrimental to the environment and our finite resources. So let's fix that. How are we gonna fix that? By stepping this motor up so it's a commercially viable, high voltage, high frequency pulse motor, pulse generator. And behind me, you can see, this has been a long time coming, but we've got the rotor spinning inside the stator housing. Got. I'll show you guys a little bit of what it took to get this rotor together. It was a lot of work. I had to use dry ice to shrink the shaft and get it into the rotor, a nice tolerance fit. <clears throat> I'll show a little bit of that footage now. So this is me in my shorts and sandals putting the shaft in. I burned myself here because the shaft is so cold and I only have one oven mitt. Ow, dang, that thing is cold. Yeah, that hurt. Wow. Cover. Now I'm back smashing this in. I would like to use a piece of wood or metal between the shaft and the hammer. I would also like to be using a larger hammer, but none of those things happened. Anyways, we didn't mushroom the shaft at all doing it this way, so everything worked out fine. Just ideally, bigger hammer, something between the shaft and the hammer itself. So it's going in here, it's looking nice. Looking really good here. I like this shot with the ice falling off. Pretty cool smoke okay so we got the shaft in we're satisfied now and we're gonna cut to the rotor being placed into the housing here shortly and now we're back in jeans still sandals but slightly better attire for working and prototyping I'm showing my spacers here 50 mil on the back of the stator housing the front face 
where the coils are. There's going to be a space of 50 mil from there to the rotor. And I'm getting ready, prepared to place the rotor into the housing. The bearings are on the shaft. You can sort of see them in the back there. And the shaft is cooled down, so I'm no longer going to burn my fingers off by touching it. So we're getting ready for the lift here. And we're going to lift this in, and you'll see it kind of just pop in place at the end. And then I'm going to switch back to the rest of the video for you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed this section of me assembling and some of the behind the scenes. Boom, it's in. Also, huge shout out to this company. I don't know how to say it correct. F-N-I-R-S-I. -I -I. Anyways, they sent me some electronics and oscilloscope and a power supply, so we're gonna use that in the future. Huge shout out, thank you guys. Okay, so this is our rotor. So you can see I've got all the magnets epoxied in there. Literally, these magnets will never come out. I would never wanna take them out. I don't think I could. These slots are tapered and I epoxied them in, so there's no amount of speed that's gonna make these magnets fly out. You can see I'm putting another layer of epoxy just making everything smooth, so there's no edges to catch on. I gotta do that to the remaining magnets but overall we've got all the magnets in place and this machine's looking amazing I have to do a little bit more work on the bearings I've got to put a bit of preload and compress them just so that they stay steady right now there's a little tiny bit of wobble in them but I gotta put some of these plates on either side and compress them preload them so a little bit of work on the bearings I might end up taking the rotor off one more time but that's how I've built it so that it's we've got the ability to take it in and out and adjust it and that's the whole point of this prototype and this setup you can see how we've got it right we've got access to where all the coils go these are our coils. They will sit in here on these slots and be adjustable the distance between the face of the rotor and the coil themselves. So we've got access to all that, the electronics, everything. This is prototyping, right? This, this is a work in progress and it requires the ability to modify, adjust, have access to everything. You can't just plan on building something perfect the first time when it's never been done before at least to this scale or for myself. So that's where we're at with this particular build. It's looking amazing and the rotor's in, it's spinning. Next step is we're gonna start winding coils. So we got our 3D printed coil cores here. Huge shout out to my buddy Kyle. He's a genius with um, CAD files. He's the one helping me with all this 3D printing. Huge shout out to Joe. Joe's, he's designing all of the circuitry for the um, end channel MOSFETs, the silicon carbide components that are replacing all of this old transistor technology on this particular model. We're revamping it with new super high speed, high switching silicon carbide components. Huge shout out to Joe and Kyle, amazing guys. We're the dream team. Those guys are geniuses. I couldn't do it without them. And we're working together to get you guys this technology into the public. So next step, I need to stretch out 250 foot lengths of this 20 gauge wire, eight of them. We need to span those out and then we're gonna twist them together with a drill and then we're gonna take those and spool it onto this coil here. So it's gonna be very similar to this one here. That'll be an octafolar, fuller wound twist together. I'm gonna to take, there's a hole in the center of these coils and I'm gonna take, I don't know if you can see that, it doesn't really matter. There's a hole in the center of the coils. I'm gonna put a piece of ready rod through there, steel plates on either end and bolt it together so it's super tight. And then when I twist on the eight strands of wire, the pressure from twisting it together won't bow out these plastic caps on the end of the coil. Then once we get it wound, we'll epoxy it. Once it's all dried and secured together, I can take off the end plates and everything will be there. It's just, you get a huge amount of pressure and I've run into that problem in the past with winding coils, everything bows out. So <clears throat> that's the coil. And then it comes to how are we gonna trigger this? This other motor, the Bandini is triggered and fired from a sensing coil. It's called the trigger coil that's wound within here. So an electrical signal is generated from that little piece of wire when the magnets go by, creates an electrical signal and that's what causes this to fire here. This current build using MOSFETs, we are gonna do it a few different ways. Give us a give ourselves some options. So we have a disc here with slots in it and we're gonna put a laser through there. And when the laser is connected, it causes a signal to fire the MOSFET. So that's an optic way of timing this whole system. There's also Hall effect sensors. We're gonna work with Hall effect sensors which sense magnetism. So we'll have the ability to do it optically, magnetically. And then on Joe's suggestion, which is a great idea, we're also gonna wind a trigger winding into one of the coils. So we'll still have that electrical ability. Optical, magnetic, and electrical ability to trigger this motor. We'll figure out what's best, what works best. We'll integrate some electronics to be able to retard and advance the pulse and modify the pulse width, things like that. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. Joe's electronics are gonna be incredible. He's got little integrated circuits, computers that monitor the temperature of every single MOSFET. We're gonna be basically be able to have all 128 circuits 
on a computer. We can see what temperature they're at, if any of the circuits are faulty, it's gonna be amazing. Then we need to have the data logger system on this. So we can see the voltages of the battery banks, the run and the charge battery banks. We wanna monitor that at all times, the RPM. We wanna monitor everything we possibly can and data log it. So then it's definitive proof when this thing runs for 12, 24 hours straight and the voltages don't change in the battery banks, that system is infinite COP or COP is greater than one. Yeah, so it's super exciting. We're getting to that point. Everything's coming together. Electronics, coil winding, timing, it's gonna be a lot of work and there's a huge amount of money still required for this. If anybody can help out, it'd be amazing. There's been some people that have reached out, Harrison, a few others, they just haven't come through. They said they were gonna fund large portions of it. If you or any other people can help fund it, reach out. My contact is in the channel. I need help with this scientific endeavor. It's not cheap. I've already invested over $10,000. All my own time, energy, Joe's time is donated. We're paying for all of the components on our own so we could really use some help. The two battery banks alone are gonna be $5,000 worth of batteries. We need at least another $5,000 worth of electronics, probably more like 10. So if we can raise 10 to $15,000. That would be amazing. It would really help get this technology out quicker. Regardless, this is coming forward. We'll find a way. I have faith. There's literally nothing stopping us. This technology is gonna get released. It's just, let's work together. Whatever you can contribute, a like, a subscribe, a share, shout out, comment, monetary donation, anything. It's all greatly appreciated. It all goes a long way. The whole purpose of this is that we have limitless potential in our technology and ourselves. We just need to believe, we need to have faith, we need to work together and solve the problems that were created with the top-down control system by going from the bottom up, working together, open sourced way. So we're solving the problems with a different mindset than with which they were created. I look forward to the next videos. I'm going to crank another one out for you guys sooner than later. It's just taking a little while to get up to speed on some of the video editing and thumbnails. And we're going to get a new video out to you guys within the next week. I promise this one took two weeks, but we're moving forward quickly and I'm going to wind the coils this weekend. It's a long weekend here in Canada. I think in the U S as well, 4th of July long weekend, maybe, or maybe that's next weekend for you guys. I don't know. Either way, shout out to the US, I love you guys. Shout out to China, I love you guys too. I love you all, let's get along. Looking forward to the next video. Like, share, subscribe.